great honor and privilege that I introduce the speaker, Sister Sean S. Morris. Hallelujah. Sean was born to the late Deacon John A. and Sister Patricia A. Howard Morris. And I'm going to read the whole thing. He said, sure, but I'm going to read the whole thing because some people may not know. And raised in Waterbury, Connecticut, being a product of saved parents, grandparents, and a great grandparent, she was born into the Refuge Church of Christ family in Waterbury under the leadership of the late District Elder Lester Smith. She was baptized in Jesus' name at the age of seven. She later received the Holy Ghost, and because of her location, began to worship in New Haven. Sister Sean is a very dedicated member of the body of Christ. Anybody that knows Sean knows that. <laughs> she worships at Straight Way Church of Christ in New Haven, Connecticut. New Haven, very New Haven. Where Bishop E. Samuel Green was the pastor. Now as Bishop McCoy, Florida. There she works for the Lord as church administrator, missionary president, ABYPU youth president, Sunday school teacher, evangelism and outreach coordinator. She continues her work for him with the Connecticut Northern Diocese as Women's Council Treasurer, Women's Council Home Mission Coordinator, ABYPU President Emeritus, Publicity Director, Missionary Choir Director, President, and March for Jesus Committee Personnel. God also employs her within the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's on the international level, as Publicity man, 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 Manager of Region 1, International Convention Committee Publicity Manager, Election Committee Chairperson for the International Congress. Though she may be a member of Straight Wing, she serves in any capacity, and in any place there's a need. And I wonder where she sleeps, because whatever you call Sean, she's there in <laughs> Jesus' name. Sister Sean is the co-founder and contra alto singer of family gospel group, The Spiritual Souls of Waterbury. She coordinated and directed the first gospel, gospel choir at Westover School in Middlebury, Connecticut. She also helped coordinate and direct the Waterbury Police Activity Lead Pal Chorus. She founded a poetry group and named it TAPS, an acronym for the Apostolic Poets Society. This group was established to encourage Edify and showcase Christian poets since its inception has expanded its chapters in Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, Ohio, North Carolina, and South Carolina. She is a licensed hairdresser and cosmetologist and owns a hairdressing business. Here we go, in which she caters to senior citizens in the comfort of their homes. God has equipped her with various creative gifts and blessed her to establish innate designs an event planning and graphic design company. And I did it, she did do mine when I had my women's retreat and Sean did a beautiful job. Sister Sean is employed by Cigna and the IT Asset Manager for Network Operations. Other accomplishments to her credits are certificate in accounting, certification in Adobe and Microsoft Office, productivity, productivity suites, and studies in real estate. One of her favorite scriptures is Haggai 2 and 9, which states, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. So help me welcome Sister Sean to come give us the word that the Lord has given her. Let's pray for her as she comes. President, Amen, Mother Rose, 
amen, and to all the mothers gathered here today, and to the young people, I honor you on today as well, in Jesus' name, amen. I am not going to prolong time. Somebody asked me this, they said they were anxious for me to speak. I told her if she pray a lot, I'll talk a little. Amen. <laughs> Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. But I love, love, love the topic that you have today, your theme. Amen. Being plugged into the source. Amen. And I'm just going to ask you to sit and pray with me because once I get going, I'm going to get rolling and we're going to be out of here if the Lord say the same. Amen in Jesus' name. Father God, hallelujah. I come before you right now, Lord. I ask you to look down upon each and every one of us up in my voice. Father, we just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Father, you did not have to bring us this far. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for the reasonable portion of our health, Father. We thank you, hallelujah, for allowing us to even be aware of where we are. God, we hallelujah ask you right now to word my mouth. Father, I ask you to bless anything that comes out of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, not just in your sight, but let it be received by your people. Father, let it not just sink in for just today, but Lord, I ask you to let it go and resonate. Let it be, hallelujah, a source for folks to, to feed off of and to grab on and hold on to and share for weeks and days and months and years to come. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to stick with your first, amen, your scripture that you've given me, and then I'm going to move around a little bit, so I ask you to just bear with me a little. Amen. As we, read, as we go to Acts 1. <coughs> verse 8, in Jesus' name. Right way, 
and you know, when you're in church and everything, and one of my friends says, she's like, well, you know, have you ever heard of anybody that get all upset all the time and they don't move? All right. Right. Amen. All right. Because when the Holy Ghost comes, yes. hallelujah, it excites you. Yes, it's it a does. good thing. And my sister here said it earlier, it just changes your whole life. Yeah. Yes. It changes, you know, everything that you thought you saw, that you thought was right. The Holy Ghost will come and it will just change everything. It's just like before. It just takes yes. the scales off your eyes. You right. see a lot better. Yes. Amen. So then, so I'm going to drop down because where it tells them that they're going to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I'm going to drop to Acts 2 and 4. Amen. Because that's where they received this power. They hadn't received it when he was telling them about it at the time. He was just letting them know it's coming. Amen. So it says, in, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm going to read one down. I'm going to actually read it down to eight. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem. See, they were obedient. Amen? Amen. We have to do God's will, but we can fully do his will if we're obedient. Amen. Amen. So again, they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. God made sure they was all right there to witness this. Now when this was noise abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own language. Amen. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? They ain't even from here. How could they be speaking our language? We understand what they say. Because God was creating his witness. Yes. Sometimes you are a witness without opening your mouth. That's right. That's right. Sometimes you're a witness just by your walk. Yes. Just right. by the way you treat people. Yes. Amen. So again, they were looking on and saying, how in the world can this be? And they said, you know, chapter 8, I mean, verse 8 says, and how hear we every man in our tongue yes. where we were born. They wasn't even born here, but they're talking our language. Amen. And then I'm going to drop down to 11. And so, you know, we do hear them speak in tongues the wonderful works of God. Yeah. Amen. So when we're witnessing, we're witnessing about the goodness of Jesus. We're not saying, oh, the Lord allowed us to be. Because <laughs> whenever the Lord allows anything to be, it's for our good. Amen. So then 12 says, and they were all amazed. And here we go. And were in doubt. Saying one to another, what meaneth this? And the others not, saying, these men are full of new wine. You're going to always have doubts. Because no matter what comes when you're witnessing, there's going to always be that one. Yes, what you, yes. they're, they're going to be to try to knock what you're saying. But when you plug into the source, hallelujah, you're continuously being fed. Amen. So if you're steadily in prayer, if you're steadily fasting, no matter what comes your way, no matter what they ask you, God is going to give you the answer. Amen. Amen. So again, they would say, oh, they must be drunk from wine. And let's see what Paul told <laughs> he, he began to witness to them. And he said to them, listen, these men ain't drunk from wine. Look at the time. Y'all know we don't allow drinking. <laughs> Not at this hour. Uh -uh. You know this can't be. And he stood up. That's the other thing. Just because someone knocks what you're saying, don't be so intimidated. Yeah. You yes, know yes. your God. Yes. Hey, shot. You know who you belong to. Yes. So no matter what they say, no matter how they may try to knock you and get you off kilter, you stand on the word of God because you're never going to stand alone. You will not go wrong. You, you can't argue the word of God. Don't argue the word of God. Just get it. Yeah. Amen. And then let them tell you. Let them prove you wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Go convert them. Trust me. Yeah. I've done it. <laughs> Amen. But Peter stood up, and this was 14, with the 11, and he lifted his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken my, to, to my words, for these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it but the third hour of the day. Mm -hmm. But this is that 
which was spoken by Prophet Joel. So he went on to explain to them what the Prophet Joel had, had prophesied. Amen. And by the time he was finished talking to them about what Joel had proph prophesied and then reminding them that they even saw different things that Jesus had done, we dropped to 37. And they said, now when they heard this, keep the word being heard. We have to tell. We cannot sit on this. Amen. I know we live in a day and age where they try to make us feel like we are not supposed to say this, this is not politically correct. You can't say this, you're going to get sued. You're going to get... Ask Paul and Silas what they would do. Amen. Right. If you're persecuted for my name's sake, this is the trick of the enemy to get the Christians to shut down. Amen. To stop. To no longer, you know, no longer do what we're commissioned to do. We are to witness. We are to win souls. We're supposed to draw people to the kingdom. We can't do that pushed in the corner saying, oh, if I say this, they yeah. may arrest me. Oh, they may give me a fine. They may not patronize me anymore. They let God do what God's going to do. Yeah. And you yeah. do what yeah. you're supposed to do. Yeah. Amen. So like I said, 30 cents is now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. No doubt, if we continue to persevere, people are going to be pricked in their heart. They're going to want to come. Amen. And they, and they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And that's when Peter went on to explain to them that they need to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, once we witness, they're going to start asking questions. How come y'all do this? How come y'all don't do that? How come this? And this is your opportunity to witness. Amen. Amen. God is fail proof. He's going to always open the door for you to witness. He's not going to command us to witness and not give us the opportunity to do it. Amen. 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 Every time that we go any place, we should be able to witness. Yes. We need to be ready to witness. And we're talking about power here. There's different types of power. There's different types of like at, at home, I know we all may have a TV, we may have a, an iron, we may have a microwave, we have our stove. Anytime we're ready to use that appliance, you expect it to work, right? Amen. You expect it to be ready, amen? amen? God expects us to be ready every time somebody comes to us that we need to witness to. He expects us to, when, when it's time to put that on, we need to be ready. Amen. amen? We need to be ready to do God's work. Yes. Amen? I don't know how to, I don't know how to witness this. Yes. Amen. Ask God. You have a conversation with any other people about any other thing, you can get God in there. Yes. You can see God. We can see God in everything. There's nothing that happens that we cannot see God in. When we see bad things happen, we can still find God in that. Amen. Amen. Success is failure. It's just turned inside out. That's all. It's flipped around. So again, we have to make sure that we stay at the ready. Always willing and able to go out and reach that soul. Do not be intimidated to go any place. God did not give us the spirit of fear. Amen. It's important for us to know that we may see people in the craft house or across the street who may not look like us, who may not smell like us, who, or you know, or may not be as educated as we are. Those are the ones. Yes. Yes. It's great yes. for me to be in here talking to y'all, but y'all know the way, at least I hope. Amen. If you don't see me at Amen. <laughs> Amen. But we need to reach out Amen. to yeah. those who don't know. Yeah. And we have a generation, a couple of generations that have coming behind us who don't even know who Jesus is. Wow. And so if they don't know him, how are they going to reverence him? How are they going to get to see him? Because when Peter, I'm sorry, when Peter was finished, Amen. Verse 40, he said to them, in many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves yes. from this untoward generation. Yes. We cannot sit around because we're saved and say, well, you know what? They see what we're doing and expect them to come. They're not going to come. Amen. 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 It is, it's very important and that I'll share this testimony. I was working at City Group met life, and I was at Faith Refuge at the time, and I handled doing their deposits and stuff, so on, every Monday morning I would go downstairs and I would make the deposits for the church, and I would chit-chat with 
to tell it. And every Monday we exchanged stories about what our weekend was like. You know, they would tell me how they went clubbing and did this, that, and the other. And I would tell them how I went and sang or, I, you know, I went to church or what have you. And one particular Monday, the young lady's name was Jessica, the teller's name was Jessica. And I'm standing there and God just took me. I wasn't even there. And he allowed me to see her. And he was, she was standing before him. And she looked over at me and said, you knew I needed to have this and you never said anything? Hallelujah. All the time, every Monday, you came downstairs and you talked to me. You never mentioned to me that I needed to have this. And now I'm lost. I, there's nothing I can do now. That was my awakeness. Yes, I would witness to people, but I would always say, oh, say, oh this is a bad day. Oh, no, every day is a good day because God is good. And God was like, that's cute, but that's not what I want you to do. Yeah. I need you to go further. I need you to go deeper. I need you to explain to people that I'm real. Yeah. I need you to explain to people that there's consequences for the choices that you make. Yeah. Amen. So when we're plugged into the power source, just like the disciples, they were so concerned if Jesus was going to be rebuilding the kingdom right away or when it was going to happen. Amen. We can't be concerned with what's going on in the world. Donald Trump is going to do what Donald Trump is going to do. Signa is going to do what Signa is going to do. Circumstances are going to happen, but no matter what's going on, I must be a witness. And most times being an effective witness is what you, how you handle what you're going through. People look at you when you're being ridiculed, when you're being criticized. How do you respond to that? Are you spiteful? Or do you just humble yourself and just continue to persevere and push on, no matter what's going on, I'm going to praise the Lord. No matter what's happening, yes. I'm going to serve the Lord. Yes. People will probably fall out if they knew the stuff that I've gone through, but I refuse, hallelujah, to allow the enemy to dictate to me my praise. Yes. I refuse, hallelujah, to just stay at home because nobody don't like me there. That's the enemy. Yes, it is. The enemy puts that in your head. Yes. The enemy don't like you. Everybody loves you. You might not think so, but they do. They just don't know it yet. Amen? Because it's the enemy. Hallelujah. We all have the same opponent. We're all fighting the same person. Spirit. Amen. We're all fighting the same thing. So now, if we were just to get together, and if we came together just like they did on the day of Pentecost, yeah. If we came together and fought together, my shot. If we just came, do you understand how miraculous really would be happening? Yeah. Yes, Lord. I hear young people saying, "Well, Sister Sean, you know, I want to see miracle signs. I want to see that and everything." Well, you can't see it until you participate. Right. Don't come just looking to see what you can see. You need to participate and be what you can be in the Lord. It's not about a show. It's not about that. Hallelujah. This thing is real. Hallelujah. And we have to take God seriously. These are the last days. Yes, Hallelujah. These are the last days. And I'm telling you, we have to come together. We must come together. We say we're the body of Christ, and we need to be the body of Christ. Let's stop being that lame limb. Amen. I'm not going to go because this one's in charge. We say we're doing something for the Lord, then we need to be doing it for the Lord. Yes. Oh, the Lord knows my heart. He sure does. Yes. He really does. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's just time out for foolishness. Yes, it is. Amen. When you're plugged into the power source, no matter what, as soon as that start button goes, <laughs> whoever, whoever's up next, you get ministered to. Amen. And it's not, you don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a singer. You don't have to, you know, you do what God has called you to do. Yes, That's why we're called the body. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everybody's not arms. Yes. Everybody's not legs. Yes. Amen. So you do your part. Because that's the way we're going to have effective ministry. We want a strong body. Amen. We want to be strong. Hallelujah. And the only way we can truly be strong and strengthen is if every limb is functioning the way it's supposed to. I don't want to be on my elbows trying to walk. I don't want to do that. Amen. Do what we're supposed to do. Amen. And at the end of the day, we're going to be better for it. 
Yes. Stay connected. Stay to that, uh, connected to the power source. Power up. Yes. Amen. Be ready at all times yes. to witness. To tell somebody how good God is. Because yes. I tell you this, if you go to a restaurant and you like something real good, you'll be telling people about it for a long time. Yes. Amen. I'll see how come God wears off so fast. Yes. Amen. Because <laughs> he's constantly doing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Every breath, he's done something for you. We can never catch up. We can never catch up. So we have to do better by our God. He died for us. He didn't have to do that. Well, he did because that was his charge. Amen. But he died for us. He's not asking us to die literally for him. He just asked us to die to ourselves. Amen. Don't be so fooled by the things in this world and what they're saying. Everything that is right to the world is not righteous. Amen. There's a difference. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, they passed the laws about these same-sex marriages and things like that, but guess what? It may be right in their eyes, but it's not righteous. Right. And because they approve the law, don't mean we go along with it. Right. Amen? Yeah. That's when you do the Paul and Silas thing, okay? Amen? And I'm going to tell you, we're coming back around to that. And God says, he don't want no coward soldiers, y'all. We have to be bold soldiers. Yeah. If you're lacking it, ask God for it. Yes. No matter what we go through, God is with us. As long as we're doing his will, he will stand with us. We'll be victorious and no matter what we're going up against. Amen. Always coming out victorious. Amen. Trust him in that. Try. Trust God in your process. Yes. Please, trust Him. Hallelujah. I don't know what each individual is going through in here today, but you need to trust God. Yes. You need to trust God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Trust God in your process. Yes. And if you're connected to the power source, He's going to feed you what you need. Yes. Yes. You're going to get what you need. Yes. So I pray that you got something out of the source tonight. I ask you to continue to keep me in your prayers. In Jesus' name.